Hi students, Mrs. Giroux here, and I just wanted to give a quick update about what we're doing this week. So we are going to dive right in, and we are going to be talking about Andy Warhol, who was a pop artist in the 80s. We are going to be talking about the way he used color theory in his prints, and you are going to create a quadriptic quad four, so a four paneled artwork that demonstrates some color theory and it should be pop art. So whatever it was that you decided that your theme is going to be, you're going to turn that into pop art. Okay. Now in my video, I go into a lot of detail about different four different color theories that I want you to demonstrate. Now, here's the deal. I'm not going to mark you down if for the, the purpose of making the artwork more cohesive, more unified, you don't exactly follow the color theory. However, do demonstrate for me that you are aware of color theory in at least one or two of the squares, but I understand sometimes visually you want it to look good. Now, the video I'm going to show you is me doing a fidget spinner. Now remember, for this class, you're creating a portfolio of a certain subject matter or message. Well, it should definitely have a message that you're going to convey in a lot of different ways. And this is going to be a really fun way to kickstart that. You're going to learn a lot of skills today in GIMP. By the time you get done with this project, you might start to feel like you could pretty much do it anything you want to with your photographs. So let's get started on that. And then remember that this video that I'm using, it's an old video. So the version of GIMP is a little older. It might look a little different, but every all the tools are still there. And essentially it's the same. When you go to select something, remember to close off your selection. When it hits that little yellow mark, hit enter. And that will make the little, 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 little bad lines, okay? So um, hopefully I'm explaining that in that video. But that was something that I noticed in the new version of GIMP that I was a selecting process was a little different, but that's okay. Just look for the yellow, yellow dot, close it off, hit enter, and your selection will be there. Um, and then finally, the way that you look up your fair use images has changed of course everything's changing there used to be this great little creative commons website in there that i show you um but that's not there anymore so let me show you what you do to find fair use pictures which hopefully you know this already because i think i might have covered it in class but we'll see let's see so all you're going to do is open up google and then go to images so just clicking on images and type in whatever your subject is so let's say my subject is hunger. So I am going to just type in hunger and hit enter and hope something appropriate comes up on the screen, not inappropriate. Okay, so far so good, it's looking good. Um, and so I am going to come over here to where it says tools, okay? And when I clicked tools, you'll notice that it gave me some additional menu items, size, color, usage rights. That's what we're interested in first, type and time. So I'm going to usage rights and I have four choices, labeled for reuse with modification, labeled for reuse, labeled for non-commercial reuse with modification and labeled for non-commercial reuse. So since it specifies non-commercial, that means we're not using it to sell something. We are just using it uh, for personal reasons. And so this is non-commercial and you are going to be modifying the images. So you want non-commercial reuse with modification. Now let's say you were creating a website for someone's business and you were gonna modify the images. This is the one that you would pick. Okay, so we'll click there on non-commercial with modifications. And the other thing that I would like you to narrow your search down with is size. So make sure that you choose large, okay? You wanna have large images because if your images are too small, they're going to be very pixelated, okay? So that is how you are going to find images. And there are some really compelling images in here that one could use. I This one is just absolutely beautiful right here. 
that would be cool. For your Andy Warhol, though, you might want to be thinking more of a popular, popular item. Um, something that's really easy to select. Um, so be careful, and you definitely don't want to do black and white. Um, so I have been trying several different searches. I did like starving children. Um, I put hungry child in, and I finally found this image that I thought would be really powerful for Andy Warhol pop art. And once you get into the assignment, you'll know what I mean. So when I go into looking in Creative Commons, please remember Creative Commons doesn't exist anymore, that website. You're just going to Google search and click on tools and select large and label for non-commercial reuse with modification and pick a photo that you like. So you just click on the actual photo itself so that it pops up enlarged and then you're going to right click on that. You'll save image as. I save my images and my pictures. Hopefully you remember where you put your image design folder. If not, you better create a new one. Go into my image design folder, 2019-20, and my block two is here. And I can save this as my Andy Warhol uh, image of a hungry child, okay? So um, you'll save that, and then the rest of the video will show you how to incorporate that. All right. And I have one more announcement to make to you. On Friday, I am going to be attending a, a board meeting at the Utah State Office of Education. Um, and so I will not be able to hold our live class. Friday at 1130. I can meet up with you in the afternoon at about 2 p.m. If anybody, assuming I don't have a staff meeting, I think that's when staff meeting is, but we'll see. If I don't have a staff meeting, I can. But um, I'll try to arrange to meet with you that day. If we can't meet that day um, and you need some help, just message me 801-637-9682 or call me. Um, anytime you're sitting at your computer working on GIMP and you have a question, just call me. That's why I have a cell phone so you can get your questions answered right away. You send an email. Remember, 24-hour turnaround might not look so great when you're sitting there needing help right away. So that's what the phone's for. Um, and that's part of the reason why I gave you this assignment this week since I won't be able to meet with you this Friday and do a lesson with you. I wanted to make sure that you got a really good lesson that you could work on this week. Um, so enjoy this first project that you have. And remember, this is going to go into your portfolio and it's, um, what am I saying? Maybe next week I'll teach you how to get your portfolio started and you can add this first piece into your portfolio and then you can build your portfolio as you go. How's that sound? All right. Thanks you guys. Um, I might also have you, nah, we'll just do things the way we've been doing them. Dropbox, we'll, we'll submit this to a Dropbox. Okay, thanks.